Hey, I'm Richie Castellano, and this is a Line 6 Helix video focusing on one of my favorite tools inside the Helix, the Parametric EQ. I think it's really powerful, and it gets me out of a lot of jams uh, when I'm trying to get things to fit right in a mix. And I know a lot of people have asked me to discuss that in a video, so here you go. Okay, so let's take a look at this sound that I made that I really like. Uh, I call this a crunchish, uh, and what it is, it's a uh, solo lead crunch with a little bit of a Cali QEQ bit of a smiley face happening there with some extra sparkle and uh, an own hammer IR with a little bit of room reverb. So basically it sounds like this. I really like it. It's a uh, medium crunch sound and it sounds great on its own. But the problem is when I put it in a mix, it kind of goes away. It sounds thin and harsh at... Um, if you were wondering what you should do about that, uh, maybe this will help you because this is what I do about it. So just to uh, show you what I mean, I'm going to record this. Here's a backing track for one of my original songs, and uh, I don't have any like crunchy, distorted guitar in there. So I'm going to lay that down right now. Okay, so here it is, and let's give it a listen. So I want to know what happened to my cool guitar sound. Uh, it sounded beefy uh, when I was playing it by itself, but all of a sudden now it just sounds like. <laughs> okay, um, now. This is a common problem, and it's not only a problem for uh, modeling amps, it's also a problem when you're miking up a guitar amp. And uh, sometimes when you mic something up, it sounds great when you have it soloed, but then you bring it into the mix, and all of a sudden, it goes away. Okay, so what can we do about that? Well, let's focus on what we don't like about the sound. And I called up a basic parametric style EQ here. Uh, it's zeroed out, I'm going to turn it on now. And I'm going to play the track, okay? I'm going, to, I'm going to play it in context because there's really, it's not going to be very helpful to EQ it soloed because we like the way it sounds soloed. So, so one thing that's coming, you know, uh, coming out really strong to me is that like bite in the high mid, which sounded cool by itself, but not so cool in the mix. So let's find that. And to do that on a parametric EQ, uh, what you're going to do is you're going to boost the frequency first. So I'm boosting it. I'm going to narrow it just so I can really, really zero in on it. So this is the Q, or the bandwidth, and I'm going to make it tighter. So a higher number is a tighter, tighter uh, curve, meaning it's affecting less frequencies. And I'm just going to, after I boost this, I'm going to scroll the frequency back and forth until I find what's really annoying me. So let's take a listen. <laughs> So I think we found the problem here. It's around this like 3, 4K area. Okay, so now I'm going to just dip that out, reduce it by lowering the gain. So let's, let's listen to what happens to this. Now I'm going to raise the bandwidth a little bit just to uh, maybe catch some more surrounding frequencies. I'm sorry, lower the bandwidth, make it wider. Okay, I want some more thump, because when I was playing this by myself, soloed, it sounded thumpy, but the thump went away. So let's find some thump. Okay, so I found the missing frequency here around 316. Uh, 316 hertz. So I'm going to give it maybe not too much because I don't want it just to get muddy sounding, but just a little bit. So 
Another problem here is when I dipped this high mid, I lost some of the top end that I really like. So let me add some top back. And then I'll clean up the bottom, which is something I generally do when I'm making, uh, when I'm doing a mix and, and shaping a guitar sound. So I'll um, roll off, I'll do a low cut here. So let's see the difference, let's A, B it. So here it is bypassed, the original. Okay, so I think that's a really big difference and I think it's better. To me personally, now, uh, the nice thing about these tools is you can do it however you want it. This is the guitar sound that I like and I want you to be able to use the tools to get the guitar sound you like. But to me, I think that's a big improvement. So here's before. After. Now, it got a little lower sounding, like I'm perceiving it as lower, so I might boost the volume back up just to make up for what I took out. There you go, and that's the sound I want. Okay, so that's great for the studio, but how does that help us in the Helix? Well, let's transfer this over to the Helix and let's try to do the same thing we're doing in this particular uh, plugin in the Helix. So let's, let's do a little side by side if we can. Okay. Cool. Actually, we can just do that. That's nifty. All right. So um, now you don't need to do this from the software. You can also do it from the hardware. So let me put this guitar down for a sec. All right, so let's open up as like one of the last things here. Let's open up an EQ. Let's do stereo because it's a stereo sound. Stereo parametric EQ. Okay, and if you'll notice, oh, my head is blocking this, so let me get my head out of the way here. Goodbye, head. All right, so if you'll notice, um, the, uh, a lot of the controls are the same. So let's see if I can mimic what I'm doing here. All right, so we have... The first thing I did was I went to the high middle frequency. So we have mid frequency here. Let's use that. We don't have as many bands on this, but we have more than enough to get the job done. So on the middle frequency, I ended up cutting 3.4K. So let's go to mid frequency, go to 3.4, okay? And let's reduce it by 6.1 decibels. Okay, or 6.2, whatever, 6, doesn't make a difference. Now there's a mid Q, okay? Now the Q here, I'm not sure if these numbers mean the exact same thing, but we'll try it. Um, the Q here is 1.93, so let's copy that, 1.93. 1.9, good enough. All right, so now we're doing that. Uh, now I want a little low end bump, and just to show you that you can do this pretty easily from the Helix uh, hardware, I'll show you that next. So what we want here, is we want at 278, we want a 2.7 dB bump, okay? So let's uh, go over there. So now we're looking at this, let me see if we can get this in focus. It's about as good as I can get, all right. So anyway, um, I apologize about the focus. So anyway, um, let's go to low frequency and we're gonna change it to 278 or as close as we can get. 280, that'll do. Uh, let's give it a little bit of a push, about 2.7 decibels. Great, and I had the Q set to one. Okay, so that's how you can do it from the hardware. Okay, so let's do the rest of the EQing. Now we have a low cut here at 72. So we'll, we'll go to this low cut, we'll put that at 72, or as close as we can get. Actually, I can type it in, I think, yeah, 72. Good, there we go, 72. 
And now we have, I think I did a high boost here. Yep, at about 7K, three decibels. Let's do that. Three decibels at uh, 7K. Now, the issue here is on this plugin, it's a shelf. So I might have to adjust this a little bit because this is not a shelf. This is a regular bell curve. But if, you know, I could do this on another, uh, another tool, like another type of EQ, but I'm going to try to keep it all in this and I'll keep the Q pretty low. All right. So now let's see if it made a difference. Let's see if we did it. Oh, and I also boosted a little bit. I think I gave this about a decibel and a half. So let's do that too, or 1.2 decibels. All right. So this should be a pretty fair approximation of what we had going on here. Let me make my head a little bigger. Hello again. All right. So, um, so this is without. And this is with. Now I might tweak this out for my own, you know, my own personal tastes. Uh, to me, it sounds a little too uh, bassy, but I'm going to fall into the trap here of not listening to it in the mix. So before I do that, let's um, let's open up a new. Uh, let's go back here. Open up a new track and um, record it so we can hear if we made a difference. So we have Helix EQ'd. I'll set up the uh, input the right way. Okay, great. So I'll mute this. And let's lay it down. Okay, so let's do a little A-Bing and see if we made a difference. Okay, so here was the original with no EQ. Now here's our new one with the copied EQ. It's sitting in the track much better to my ear. And here is the original one with the uh, plug-in EQ. And let's see how close we got. Uh, just for fun, I'm going to hard pan them. I'll hard pan the original to the, to the left and the new one to the right. And let's see how close we got. Let me lower it so we don't blow everything up. Pretty close. So that's the point of this video. I just want to let you guys know if you make a sound and it sounds great at home and then you bring it to band rehearsal or you play it through your monitors or whatever or your, your, your uh, full range speaker and you said, oh, what happened? You know, it sounds so thin. There are ways to fix that. I mean, there are other ways, of course. You can try different speaker uh, simulations. You can try different IRs, different amps. Uh, but the first thing I usually do if I really like the sound and the way it sounds soloed is I'll try that EQ. And this also works for the global EQ. Uh, so if you find the same thing is happening to all your sounds where they sound great at home and then you bring them to rehearsal or to a gig and all of a sudden they sound weird, you can use the global EQ to affect all of them. Me personally, I will put um, a parametric EQ at the end of most of my presets just to be able to you know, balance out every sound specifically for what it needs because not every, I feel like sometimes not every sound needs the same sort of attention. So I hope that was helpful. 
Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it. And if you could, uh, like and subscribe. Thanks. Thanks for watching this video. To see even more videos, make sure you subscribe to this channel. If you'd like to interact with me on social media, please follow my Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. If you like podcasts, check out my show Band Geek on the Riotcast Network. For tour dates and even more info, go to richiecastellano.com. Now, here's a video I picked just for you. I think you'll like it. Go ahead, click it. It's good. Eh? Huh?